You know, a moment ago, I asked the secretary a question we have frankly not yet gotten a good answer to. Take a look. How many people have signed up? We'll be doing what we've done with every other program, Medicare Part D, we've done it with CHIP. We will give monthly enrollment figures. We've said that since the beginning. But what we can tell you is that we have 500,000 plus accounts right now with people who have established that are in the process of, of shopping for affordable coverage. It seems like an important thing to know, I imagine, especially given all the problems with the site. I mean, how well is it working? Can you say right now how well healthcare.gov is working? We know there's problems, but what can we say about it? Well, I think what we can tell you is that thousands of people have signed up. We know that people are getting through every day. It is not where we need it to be. It isn't as smooth as we want it to be for the volume of people who want this product. The good news is we have a product. We have a market. We have competitive plans, affordable prices, and no one will ever be locked out of the insurance market again with a pre-existing condition and that's really great news to millions of Americans. There's a lot of frustration obviously in the country and no one probably knows this better than you and the president. Did you ever talk about resigning to the president? What I talked about is doing the job that I came here to do. Uh, this is the most important work I've ever done in my life. Delivering on an historic act, making sure that we have health security uh, for the millions of Americans. Uh, this law was passed three and a half years ago. I've been working day in and day out to implement this law. And at the end of the day, it's about people like Evelyn Hernandez, who I was with in Miami, single mom, uh, has no affordable coverage in her workplace, is terrified every day that something's going to happen to her. Because if she gets hurt, uh, no one is there to take care of her child. Evelyn finally has health security and millions of Evelyn's like her, so that's where my focus is. Now, there's great stories like that, but again, that there is a lot of frustration, as you know, no, Madam Secretary. I mean, if this persists, or even at this point now, would you consider resigning over this? I think my job is to get this fully implemented and to get the website working right, and that's really what I'm focused on. Uh, that's I work at the pleasure of the president. Uh, he is singularly focused on making sure we deliver on this promise. That's what I'm committed to doing. What has he said to you about this? Uh, let's get it done. Um, you heard him yesterday in the Rose Garden, and uh, you know he is the first to admit that the website doesn't work the way we need it to work. So that's one of the reasons, Sanjay, we have announced this tech surge and bringing in uh, new eyes and ears. Jeff Zients, who's a, a colleague and friend of mine from this administration, is coming in as a management consultant to uh, the administrator of CMS to make sure we look at the whole management system. We want to make sure that we have the best and the brightest in terms of tech folks. We have gathered them together and asked the contractors to bring their agents to the table, have asked the uh, presidential innovation fellows to add some strength because we just want to make sure we get all the right answers and do what is needed to be done as quickly as possible to open up the doors of this marketplace. Je Jeff Zients uh, brings a CEO background uh, with them. What about tech people? We hear the, the best and the brightest. Are there people or companies that we're going to recognize? Can you give us some names? Well, right now, we've asked all of our contractors to look at their teams on the ground and bring in uh, their absolute A-team, and I, I am confident that that is happening every day. Well, we also, the Presidential the Innovation Fellows... The contractors didn't, uh, didn't, didn't do such a great job so far. Well, I... I mean, didn't, why didn't they bring their A-team in in the first place? I, I can't tell you... Um, why are we why saying they, three weeks now, bring your A-team into this, this whole equation? We have hoped that they had their A-team on the table, but I, I am talking to CEOs and urging them to uh, make sure that we have the talent that they have available. I, I think all of them have uh, folks who are assigned to a project. We want new eyes and ears. We want to make sure that we get all the questions on the table, that we get all the answers, and accelerate the fix as quickly as possible. I know that open enrollment goes for six months to the end of it March. Does. But when will this be fixed? Well, as quickly as we can get it fixed. I, I think I can tell you it's improving every day. Uh, and more people are getting through, more people are having an easier time, and we intend to stay at this until uh, we open the doors wide open. Yeah, do, should, do we deserve a specific date? I mean, what, what can we tell people? Because, I mean, there's a, there's a little bit of a loss of confidence in this. So if you say as quickly as possible, that meant October 1st. Well, what we can tell you is that it isn't where it needs to be. 
Uh, we are three weeks into a 26-week open enrollment period. People are enrolling every day, not as many as we would like, not at the time we would like, and we will keep working on it until uh, it is working as efficiently as possible. In the meantime, go to the website, healthcare.gov, call the call center 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are individuals who can answer questions in 150 languages and actually help people enroll, walk them through the enrollment uh, that is available, and also navigators, the in-person trained assistants on the ground who can do the paper application. So we have a website, we have a call center where you can walk all the way through, get the product at the end of the day, and we have actual volunteers on the ground. So people have lots of options, and what we know and this three weeks has demonstrated clearly millions of Americans want this product. Millions of Americans have waited a very long time and we want to make sure that they, at the end of the day, get the health security that they want and deserve. Let me just ask a couple more questions. I know our time is short, but the individual mandate. The concern is if there's this uh, idea that people had a hard time signing up and they didn't get signed up for whatever reason on time, can they still be penalized? Can, can you penalize people if it was so cumbersome to get signed up in the first place? Well, I think that the reality is that people, as I just said, can sign up any of three ways, and more are being able to uh, do it does every day. Does that mean the website's not that important then? It is, a, it is certainly a tool, and we think it can be an easy tool for people who are tech savvy and want to use a website. And we're determined that it be a lot easier than it is right now. What I know, though, and is that lots of people, and people I talk to every day, are not tech savvy, want a live human being to sit and answer questions, want to talk to someone over the phone, want to talk to their friends and neighbors about what health care providers in the network and then go back and ask some questions. So we anticipated at the outset that everyone would never use the website. That needs to be part of the opportunity. The market is at the end of the day what it is. This isn't the website, it's about health care and about affordable plans. So just yes or no, is there any way that the individual mandate would be delayed? Well, I don't think that that really is the question right now. The issue is, will people be able to sign up for affordable health care in this six-month open enrollment period? And I think the answer is absolutely yes. If we are going to make sure that the law works, making insurance companies provide coverage to everyone uh, without regard to pre-existing conditions. You need everybody to come into the pool. Uh, you need to make sure that it's people who both have a pre-existing condition and those who don't. So at the end of the day, we need uh, people to sign up. Uh, and I think we've got a lot of ways that they can. The website needs to get better. That's a focus, and we will deliver on that. The president's legacy is, is part of this whole issue as well. I mean, has it been tarnished by what has happened? I think that what we need to do is, is see the enrollment figures at the end of March of uh, 2014. That's when open enrollment ends. And what I know from what we're seeing in not only um, states that are run by the federal website, but states around the country, is that the interest is huge, that people are eager to have this affordable product, and that the product is there. Uh, insurance companies have to compete for one another for people's business for the first time. Uh, Janice Baker, who was with the president yesterday, was the first person to sign up from Delaware. It took she her said, a few days, she said. She said she was frustrated a few days. The great news for Janice is she'll have coverage on day one, as will somebody like Janice who signs up on December 15th have coverage day one. So we're going to keep focusing to make the website work better, but millions of Janices all over this country are going to save money. She's saving $150 a month. She has a lower deductible, and she is thrilled with the notion that now as a small business owner, she doesn't have to worry that she's going to be priced out of the insurance market. Well, I'm anxious to see how many more uh, Janices there are out there, you so bet. looking forward to those numbers. Thank you. Sure. I'm so appreciate it.